Okay, this is the uh, February 25th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, we're being videoed by uh, Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents <coughs> later on. First item on the agenda, minutes for uh, the February 19th meeting. I thought That's they were, uh, considering the shorthanded nature of the minutes taker, uh, <laughs> I thought that they were very well done. Mm -hmm. I wasn't at the meeting, so I'll abstain. Right. Um, Lisa, did you do these minutes no. or did Tom? Tom? Tom did these minutes. Yeah. Well, That's he must be taking after you. He did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I reformatted so that it would fit on two pages. Oh, okay. That Was he a little worried? That's the thing that I really okay. aspire to be right. able to do. Thanks, Lisa. All right, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes. Yes, second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Next item on the agenda is meetings attended by select board members. Bill, do you have any since last week? Um, actually, the exact same thing as the week before. You can just reprint it. I did the exact same set of meetings and phone calls. That's budgets and uh, DESI? Yeah. School budgets, both of them. Yeah. And DESI. Yeah. Sad. Life is life is a groundhog day. Yeah. <laughs> we wish. <laughs> Robert, did you have So I, I had went to two interesting <clears throat> meetings. Uh, one was the Energy Committee hosted uh, um, uh, a meeting with folks from a group called Solar Access, state organization that is doing the equivalent of a solarized project. Uh, but this time it's for both solar and mini splits. And so, so if anyone is interested in uh, solar panels that didn't do it with the Conway Solarize project, and this would add also mini splits, you can talk to Bryce, um, have somebody come to your house, you know, do an evaluation whether your site works or not, and the state has tremendous uh, subsidies and and uh, almost zero interest loans and. I can say, you know, m most everyone in town will qualify as low income uh, because our incomes are all compared to the state median and, and uh, which is, uh, well, for a family of four, I think it's 91,000. So, so I'm not sure, you know, I mean, it's That's not- Low to moderate. Income. Low to moderate, yep. So, so you qualify for, for assistance anyway from the state because here in Western Mass, typically, our uh, wages are that much lower than in Boston, and they dominate these kinds of medians. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, so that's good for us. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so it was, a very, it was interesting. They gave a, a good pitch, and, and, uh, and there was maybe 10 or 12 people in the meeting. Was, was there any documentation available? Uh, Bryce has a lot, yeah. He does, yeah. okay. Yeah. Can you contact Bryce and maybe put some of that on the website? Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, I went to a meeting at FERCOG uh, with uh, the Colonial Broker, who is the broker for our aggregation, mm -hmm. along with reps of most of the towns that are part of the aggregation. I'm Conway's uh, um, representative to these aggregation meetings. And it was basically Colonial beginning to try to talk about uh, the way we might choose greener options and what will happen when the aggregation gets far enough along that they put out a bid and we get pricing information. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all preliminary right now. Um, and to some extent, trying to talk about something that got complicated as to whether we as a group want to have one price for the entire group for our basic electricity or whether he should give each town their individual price and um, and he's you know wants to know how strongly that the group wants to stay as a group, as opposed to if he were to tell one town, let's say Deerfield or one town, that they could get it for a couple tenths of a cent lower, and that might cause Deerfield to be motivated to split off of the group, and uh, when he has provided town by town pricing like that then it sometimes causes discord within the group. And well, you know, the whole, the whole object of an aggregation is to get more people in it and together. Right, right. Rather right. than have 
Mm -hmm. So 13 little towns split uh, off. And the whole reason we did this was to have the whole thing do it together. Yes. But, but, but we are legally 13 separate town aggregations Absolutely. just purchasing yeah. our electricity together. And so doing it as a group, we hopefully will have a lower price. But, um, and then trying to begin to talk to people about greener options and what kind of greener options we want to look at. So. Did he say when they were thinking of going out to bid? Um, it's looking like it could be as long as eight months from now. You, you know, the, For the he's, winter he's, rates. Well, no, just it'll take the DPU that long to actually process the paperwork. So he can't go out to bid until after they process mm -hmm. the paperwork. Okay. The, and the DPU is still, you know, working very hard on the um, on the, the gas explosions that occurred in Andover and North Andover and. and they're they're just they're just recovering from all of the work they had to do on that. We we've already been through the DPU public hearing process. Okay, it shouldn't take too much longer. Uh, well, okay. I'll let you argue that you know. Okay. With no, our green energy yeah. thing is getting more and more nuanced. I mean, yeah, the 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 transmission line that that they want to build from all through Maine to bring hydroelectric energy, which would qualify as green energy. But at the cost of of destroying how many square miles of pristine forest in Maine for the transmission line? Yeah. So is that really green? How green? You know that the, the, all that stuff. That that has good. nothing to do with our aggregation, though. Oh, doesn't it? Yeah, our right. aggregation has to do with with purchasing renewable energy certificates from from class one or right. So if the state says it's renewable energy, then it is for as far as we're concerned. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Even though there's more to the story than that. Any other meetings? No, that's it for me. And I didn't have any meetings to do with uh, town business last week. So, next item on the agenda, public comment. Do we have any public comments? Hearing none, we'll go on to the next item on the agenda, which is an amendment to the Sheehan-Robertson conservation restriction. Uh, we got to update the documents, new survey map, reference there too, and including updated acreage. Mr. Sheen, Ms. So my Charlie. understanding is, it does it. The land trust wanted to survey the six-acre <coughs> parcel, which had never been surveyed, so they would understand where the boundaries were. So it's they're substituting a description of the property that includes the surveyed description. It doesn't change the acreage in any substantial to any substantial degree. Um, and uh, I think Elaine even. There was some question about whether or not there needed to we, be we, we a new signature, a but still, just for the sake of everything sure. being. Yeah, yeah, it's not a substantial difference. It's, it's not, not a substantial difference. You have to pay too much for it. About $2,500. Oh. But the, the boundaries are the boundaries. But I the mean, boundaries the, are the, the boundaries. None of that changes at all. It's just, no, no, no. Right? Nothing we around. didn't know where the boundaries were. Between right. the two right. parcels, and yeah. they are Especially still separate with the parcels. parcels. Yeah. We didn't know whether we have to give them a still separate parcels. Yeah. So what happened was. Their parcel gets a little bigger, and this parcel gets a little bit like was it two tenths of an acre or something? Yeah, it's, it's not not material. Yeah. That's all. All right. But the, in order for them to be, able, they have to walk the boundaries. Sure. And yeah. they didn't yeah. know where they were gonna walk. <laughs> so you need new signatures from us, right? Okay. And we need to be notarized, and, and we need, need to, to be sign. Notarized. And we need to sign. Yeah, that's sad. That's a sad, sad to have to spend twenty five hundred dollars to get to that. Right. Done. I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, sign this correction to the um, Sheehan Robertson uh, conservation restriction. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. So, can we sign this? No. Do we sign this? But it has to be attached. Do you want to see all of this? Yeah. Okay, that's you. Mm -hmm. yep. <clears throat> Did your license already? Yeah, no, I gave it to my daughter a couple days ago. It hasn't returned yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you let her drive under your license? Is that no, she had, she had to sign some. She was hours. pretending she was you in the liquor store. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, <right>. right. <laughs> yeah. I need to sign. Yep. Here's a credit card. 
Yeah. Okay, thank you. You <laughs> <laughs> used to have a picture on it, Phil. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You don't have anything with a picture on it, huh? No, sorry. Mm. You probably know him personally. I so do right? personally but know him, yeah. Is that okay? Yep, that's okay. Yep. It could be an imposter, you know. Never. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> evil twin. Now who is um okay this is No you don't have to do anything with that oh, one. Oh they do that, yeah. Right, they do right. That. when they record it. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Is it twenty fifth? Twenty fifth. We thank you all. Oh, no, you thank you. <laughs> Hopefully it's final this time. <laughs> See, there were several people that approached me out of the blue on hearing of this the first time and actually heard positive comments from both. Oh, sure. That, yeah, well, the, that the, this is the, the appropriately iconic part. Like that, and that really should be the standard as far as I'm concerned, whether a given thing is iconic to the town, whether it, it matters. Well, it was a natural fit. For, for sure, does. So. I was just talking to Maria. I don't remember her last name, but about the trees Donald. that oh, Donald, about Donald, the trees yeah. that they planted there, and I, that the elm, the elm just told right. me kind of elm trees. On, thing, on that, which is really the, great. Yeah. That was pretty much what they planted. Yeah. Page yeah. twelve. Mostly her. Page twelve. The new elms that are resistant. Yeah. Yeah. It's They're great. Princeton elms. Yeah. She said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was very excited about that. Yeah. She was. And she told me they grow very quickly. Mm -hmm. So we'll bring this back and give it all to Lauren. I'll bring it up bring tomorrow. It tomorrow. Yeah. And it goes back to the state for final signature. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So, so Steve didn't have to survey his portion? No. It was well, we did it for him, really. Oh, oh, you did that too. <laughs> but by doing the one, we set the boundary yeah. and the other one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 When I bought our house, we had to survey okay. because it hasn't been surveyed and realized the deed, the yep. deeds were in error. Thank you, thank you very much. It sort of said this direction, this direction, and none of it matched up. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we ever surveyed the real two on one Maple Street. There's no even where the boundaries are between them. Those yeah. two, Megan Hart's house and yeah. the yeah, yeah. house at two on one Maple Street. No they are what they are. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Ms. Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks, Thanks again. Thanks for seeing us. Good luck with it. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Um, what do we have on that? We have lots of things. A <laughs> um, number of things we went over um, last time. Uh, there's a there was a confusion about the tax versus the the payment. Now the, the tax is something that I understand now um, is is only applicable to retail operations. Mm -hmm. um, so you, there, there are two sections under uh, one, B and E, uh, that are it seem to be um, B seems to relate uh, to the tax, um, and E is really the uh, community impact agreement. So I I'm confused about. What uh, what the difference 
between those or why, why there were two um, clauses for that. And where are you looking, Tom? In the host community agreement, uh, 1, B, and E. Um, yeah, no, we don't. Yeah. Uh, well, we've given several copies yeah. out before. Yeah. Um, here's the manufacturing agreement. Um, the other, uh, so some clarification on why there's both B and E would be would be helpful. Okay. Uh, we had some questions about the schedule of payments. That's fine with us. Um, we had some questions under number two, the town obligations. Um, it says within two business days after the effective date, the town will execute a town HCA certification. Um, it takes us 48 hours just to call a meeting. So we're thinking maybe uh, five business days that, that would enable us to call a meeting for the for the, whatever the following Monday was. Um, uh, actually, seven business days would allow us to because if it, it would have to come in before uh, on a Thursday or before. Um, so if we could yeah, say we seven instead of two, that would be very helpful to us. Um, so one of the things that we haven't talked about is um, what activities the town might engage in. Um, and I send a list out with my email. Yeah. Um, that uh, we think would be something that we can both agree would be uh, something to help the town cope with the traumatic uh, experience of <laughs> having these operations in town. Um, so I don't know if you all have, have actually looked at that list. Uh, but right, but it's hard to know how much those amounted to. I mean, it's, it's well, that's thing. what's up for negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I think the board is free to talk about what uh, what you think we might want. There, there's you know educational programs, school programs, that sort of thing, uh, and community programs. We have a public health nurse here in town comes in once a month. Maybe uh, she could be involved in some outreach, um, that sort of thing. Uh, she has a special dealings with elders, uh, so that's you know one one path that might be taken. So really, it's uh, it's up for discussion. If anybody has any particular <coughs> feelings about any of that, um, you know, I. I Part of it is that, um, I, I, you know, everything on that list had some benefit to the town to it. I didn't want to be in a situation where we're imposing our will on an unwilling uh, entity. Nothing so, else in imposition. It's right, right, right. Negotiation. Th that, so that's what that was meant. So I wanted to hear from them, you know, uh, him, them. Uh, I, yeah, I can like just what? tell you what we're thinking right now. Um, and there's going to have to be a bunch of back and forth with our lawyer and stuff like that on how to word all of this, which I'm not at all qualified for. Um, but um, Don't tell yourself short. In general, um, we're comfortable with a with the, with the 3% levy. Uh, there's just one caveat to that, um, which is that I think it should be um, a progressive taxation where if you only make sales up to X amount, you would be subject to a, a smaller levy. And the reason for this is one, obviously, it's quite easy to have a catastrophic loss of the crop out here. Um, two, I think it encourages more small sized operations, which I think is in keeping with the town bylaw. Um, and personally, um, more happy being part of a community that's not dominated by one um, large, larger, it's not going to be large, but relatively large entity. 
So the maximum that the town allows should get the maximum percentage um, applied to it then. And then... I would say, like, you could say, like, 1% on the first million dollars of sales or something like that, and then wh whatever we come up with, right, and then 3% above that. Um, I see. For, for, all, for all sales beyond... Um, I, so I will also about note the town impact mm -hmm. the, yeah. Yeah. I'll also note that there is a bill pending in the legislature now to amend the marijuana law so that uh, the money that comes in right now all the money comes into the general fund which makes it almost impossible to account for mm -hmm. what gets spent for what in the town and and it is supposed to be spent on related activities so um, Things like paying for the the town nurse, if 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 we make a, a substantial portion of her duties be um, marijuana outreach and education, um, the school psychologist who does a lot with the initial initial uh, yeah. drug so, drug classes and things like that. So the bill would make the monies that come in go to a specific account from which these other things would be paid. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a hunch that that is likely to go forward. That's hugely problematic, just from an accounting point of view. I mean, the whole so, thing is hugely yeah, problematic. Yeah, I mean, that's it's better the way it is. All right, sorry, go ahead. Well, the idea is that cities and towns have to demonstrate that they're using that money to pay for the effects that they have negotiated as part of the host community agreement. Um, and it makes it, may, it makes it much easier to account for that if it's all coming in and out of the same account. Mm -hmm. um, so, there's there's two things on this list that, that would be relevant. I think uh, more relevant than others: reimbursement for prior legal review expenses. If we and, go over the escrow account and and support and support for school programs focused on public health and substance abuse awareness. I think uh, and and also support for community-based teen and public health focused programs. The rest of them, I don't know whether they, they really apply to us. We're not going to have a lot of police patrols. We're not going to have a lot of uh, traffic, traffic studies. Right. Okay. But even um, the police patrol, there is an expense. Even, and, and, you know, how often does he go past your place now? Not very. How often will he go past your place in the future, a little bit more, uh, um, maybe a lot more. But there's well, a cost. There's a cost per mile to operate the vehicle. There's a cost yeah, uh, that, amortization of the expense of the vehicle. All that stuff. That would certainly depend on on activities that that happen at at the property, right? Well, as a rate, we're, we're, we're talking about we're he'd talking have to go by there inspect cultivation security. and manufacture. Right. So we're not talking about a high traffic situation. Right, but it's the security responsibilities that he would have, that a police chief would have as well. I, I mean, you could certainly make an argument during like near near harvest season, if if that you know if you that's go helpful. by more often. Yeah, if or, that's helpful. Or if that. you wanted to let let the police know when you were going to be transporting. Right. Although I mean, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be secure anyway. It's got to so. be secure anyway. So well, you're going to provide your own security anyway, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll it, probably so be hiring people to watch the crop, you know, near harvest and anyways. And I, I'm with you, John, in looking at this list, though, and most of these things don't feel like things that we would do. Um, that was an initial list. I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm not like, no, I understand. I'm not knocking this. Yes. But and yeah. if we were a larger town, many of these things we would do, which maybe then would justify three percent. But I would think so you know if we could set a lower percent. If we generalize it to legal, uh, security, and education. Yeah. Those items. Okay. Yeah. So broaden and, and, it a and, bit. Yeah. And and what do you think about the uh, the one percent? On a million dollars, three percent thereafter. I, I like three percent on everything. I do too. And I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Part of me is that first of all, this is you're the first one down the line. You're the first one, whatever. So we're going to be. You're, you're setting a precedent. <laughs> no, you're yeah. setting a right, precedent. Right. Exactly. And, and you know what, what do we do with the next one? This. Yeah. You know. And and the other thing is that the the one thing that we can change is the duration 
of the whole, whatever. It can it can't be longer than five years, but it can be shorter. Right. And so and that may be challenged as well, and it may be written so that there are five year agreements that are made. Um, there are people who would like it to be interpreted that way. It is not now currently <clears throat> being interpreted that way. But you know, the law's subject to amendment. And and we could we could revisit that three percent depending upon how the relationship goes. Well, what what, uh, what uh, you know what I'd like to do is just be in a position as a town to act. Uh, you know, it, 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 if if that three percent proves to be so, too so onerous to the business that it's a threat to the businesses, or go, the going concern, then I'd like to be able to get be nimble enough as a community to be able to work with that at that point. But, but I feel like it's more going to be like in the first couple of years, right, that, that, that that's a concern, right? Um, yeah, again, it depends how the relationship Because I mean, I, I, I agree that, that, you, that, that any, time, any, any agricultural entity, you, you're weather dependent and whatever, but the, there's also multiple crops but at multiple stages, so you can lose one, and you know, what? How many weeks is it till the next one's on the online? Well, I'm not I'm doing not. indoor, right? I mean, we're right. not like right. you gotta you gotta think of me as a farmer, not as like a hedge fund backed giant warehouse, uh, right? Pumping out, you know, but, a thousand strains. But three percent of a lost crop is still zero. So, like, I don't see how that. If you lose a crop, then we. I mean. Well, three we percent of a million dollars is thirty thousand dollars, and that's a lot of money for us to spend. Um, One percent is ten thousand dollars. It, it's easy to assign that to the school psychologist's hours, some portion of that, or the town nurse's hours, that sort of thing. So that I mean, that's what we're talking about. On a million dollars, is the difference between ten thousand and thirty thousand, just to make that clear. The state was clear that this money has to be spent on activities that the town is doing because we have a facility here. And, and I believe and, it will be going into any, and coming out of the same account. But I didn't see anything in the account for what for in 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 the in any of the laws that that showed how we account for that. That's you, a that, you know, that is what this negotiation is for. That's part of this negotiation. And and I would argue that 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 actual cost. So even though that would appear to be a limiting thing. In actuality, um, it's not, tr it's no difficulty at all coming up with actual expenses that far exceed whatever we're permitted to, to ask for. That, because it's not just, you know, it, it's the town infrastructure that allows for the police department to, it, it, to it, it's the town infrastructure that allows for the highway department to have graders that can fix the road because there's traffic that there wasn't before and there's washouts there every year and we spent a lot of money fixing that road up we wouldn't be so inclined to I know. and all that stuff you're, you're saying, saying we could justify it I mean I'm on your team I, 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 I would like to figure out a way um, not because this is a, uh, a a cannabis cultivation project, but because I would like to figure out, figure out a way to hold businesses more tax accountable to the communities in which they operate. As a general, as a general point, and I and I'd like that to be what this is about. Unfortunately, the the way the law is crafted is pretty. It's not that helpful. <laughs> the other thing that I, w that I don't see here is if we get a second one. I don't see all of those expenses doubling. You know, the same yeah. applies for the, the the escrow for the legal review of the host agreement because it's likely to be the same wording, right? I didn't think that. Which you know, I'm fine as as a good faith gesture to the town, um, and because I want to get the the ball rolling. But certainly, like if you're trying to set a precedent here, you know, after we we pay that money, that's your your blueprint for a host agreement. You're not going to have substantial legal costs beyond that, hopefully. I just think 3% seems excessive. And Why can't it just be a progressive taxation? Well, we, 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 we could, do you we think could, that makes sense? We could ramp down the numbers and say 1% on the first 
250,000, 2% on the first 500,000, 3% on the first. I, I don't know what your, I have no idea what your numbers look like there. Them. So we have, we uh, have no idea what the numbers are. Right, right. I mean, no, I mean, this it's, is all an adventure, right, that yeah. we're on. But I will say that, yeah, um, the numbers for, uh, they have constructed a law that makes it the barrier to entry for smaller, non, people who don't have a lot of financial backing, they, they make it quite difficult. Um, I don't, I, I think the costs are going to be fairly high to, to start up, and I think $30,000 at the end of the year, that's half a, half a salary for an employee for me. Um, which, incidentally, right, but, that's... But you're talking about $30,000 on, on a million dollars worth right. of sales. Right. Okay. I, I don't see 30000 on a million dollars worth of sales as owners. It's not profit, right? Sales. Right. So it's gross, before... Gross receipts. Yeah. Yeah. Gross receipts. yeah, it's not gross. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. But there's net, you know, as an agricultural enterprise, um, and as someone who has grown everything from chrysanthemums to tomatoes, uh, there's never been a crop that you've been allowed to legally grow where the difference between cost and sales are as wide. Um, it, like I, if I could sell, if I could sell the amount of work that we, the, the chrysanthemums, the amount of work that we did to, 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 for a 30 cent cutting to be able to sell at retail for $2 um, was, was staggering. And then just the number of times you get a pinch from each one. The, the, um, I mean, everybody wants to like cut, that. right? right now from your lawyers to your CPAs to the state wanting money for the seed to sale tracking system to getting your product tested to the onerous security um, there, there's a lot of expenses mm -hmm. in, in starting this it's not um, everyone I've talked to about an impact fee has talked straight three percent they haven't talked about any any you know graduated or progressive there have, situations. There have been so like Monte, uh, Montague has a progressive. You want? Do you have an example of that? Because nobody I've spoken to has said anything other yeah, than I could, straight three percent. I could send those over to you guys. Do you know what the figures are? Yeah, it, I think it was they they did it one two and then three. Uh, I couldn't I have that. off the top of my head. Uh, tell you exactly what the figures were. Um, Deerfield did a straight lump sum. Two percent. That was that was the gr that was the the grow. The retail did was different. The retail was first, and they made a lump sum. They agreed to a lump sum payment to the police department every year, and a lump sum so that the town was, I think budgeted one hundred. I mean, that's just straight bribery. Uh, I, I, some of it feels like that. Yes. As, yeah, from these great do docu Tom Tom this Tom school, this documents, Tom originally the way it was going to go down, and then one meeting later, sorry, it's going to the police department. The, the, the documents that Tom sent us had a classification that looked like you could combine growing and processing into one operation. That's that's that's, that's fine it, too. Like, there's no reason we can't present. No, you're not going to. We'll be able to move. According to our CPAs, at least, we'll be able to move into, and you're not going to tax us at 6%, we'll be able to move inventory from one business to the other before you would be able to I would um, think so. tax it. Or at least we've been... But, but, but there was an operation that was called like growing co-op. It was a cultivation co-op that involved cool. both cultivating and processing under one license. Oh, oh that, that we can't do. You can't. Um, someone who's filed a Schedule F... Uh, in the last five years, uh, which I believe um, John uh, is doing the, the meeting on Friday, I believe he has, and I think he's interested in the, the cooperative. Um, but I can still have the license under one business entity. Uh -huh. for, I can have two licenses. It doesn't have to be two host agreements. I could combine that conceivably into one. It just sounded like it would fit your model perfectly. I didn't know why you couldn't do it. So. That's why. Uh -huh. yeah. So, you know, I, I think it's quite likely if someone else in the town had been active, we would have probably jumped in and been like, yeah, let's, we'll work under your, your license. 
but how it's transpired is I've been the only person. All right, do we have any other changes that, that we want to make? In it? Uh, no, those were the only ones that we came up with okay. last time. So we're basically talking about impact fee. Yeah. That's the only one. Which is really, from those yeah, other which was really been the central thing from the beginning. No. Um, we still haven't gotten that much closer. I guess we have. We're making progress. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not fast enough. Uh. <laughs> um, yeah, getting, getting us knowing what the difference is between B and E would help. Okay. Too. But uh, I, th I think E works. I think if you just get rid of B, everything is fine because E says the same thing. Um, it, as far as I can see, it, it's got a little bit more in it. Well, you know, at this at this point, we don't have we don't have an estimate of reasonable town costs. Right. Well, that was the whole point, though. That, that well, and, and that's and such he a says nebulous approximation. Thing. I don't he think he, he says a reasonable I approximation. I, I think I think <laughs> because that, we will never we won't know that, and it'll vary year to year. That's the point of setting it up in a fund so that we can dole it out as mm -hmm. programs become available, as staff do, you know, new initiatives, that sort of thing. Are there any towns that do it as a dollar amount instead of as a percent? That was the way it all went yeah, initially. There's, there's sometimes a one-time charge up front and then a percent. No, I mean just as a as a as a dollar amount instead of a percent. You mean it's a yearly too. fee that you have? Look at look at the way. city. Look at the, the one of the first ones in the state, the city of Salem. They got three percent plus a fully fund. The school gets a fully funded drug counseling program. The police department gets a new cruiser. Like every year, these are huge. I, I, and people and, are thinking about law, class action lawsuits. And that to sounds call illegal that according back. to well, the law. Right. Yes, yeah, Salem was excessive. Yeah, by, by any but way I, you want to measure I think it. that they're grossing yeah. like seven or eight million a year, and I think, I don't know. Uh, I, they, they were initially. I don't, they're probably not anymore, but they the were. The law's expressly limiting to 3%. Um, that's an interpretation. I, 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 <laughs> no. Uh, the, 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 you know. Um, Let, can, we, can, we, yeah, yeah. can we reorient the, the conversation to what is going to be good for businesses operating in Conley? Because I think that's really what this is about. What is going to allow people to operate and give back to the community? Uh, and so what I'm suggesting suggesting is a lower percentage on sales up to, you guys can fill in the blank to some degree, and a higher percentage on sales above that. With regards to the $2,500 to review the application, I've said from the outset that I don't feel like this is a good policy. I think it discourages people, places undue barriers and farmers in this community because that's a lot of money for a, lot of, for a farmer. Um, I'm happy to, to contribute that to get this host agreement looked over by your lawyer and I think that will probably serve as a blueprint and you probably wouldn't have to ask again for that escrow. And I think that's a pretty reasonable offer. Because can you get us the Montague language or whatever that language is so that we can... I can get that for you, yeah. That'd be good. Okay. And at this point in time, Tom Lesser is available for a meeting on Monday the 11th. Save your money. Save your money unless, unless we can't agree on something. That, that's fine. But um, if you guys want his input and to get his advice, he's done this for a number of other mm. towns. He lives in Conway. Yeah. He's going to have the interests of this community at heart for sure, even though he's working <laughs> for me. But yeah. Yeah. Cool? Yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks, Phil. All okay. right. Phil, have you, but there's no way for us to have any knowledge of what you think your receipts will be. Uh, oh. I mean, is that part of the host agreement? Is it uh, like a project a projection of? Well, I mean, if we were to say we want to do this at the school, we think the police are going to have to have this many. We could add up how many dollars that is, and then if we were going to say, but if if he can get started this year, 
that's a bigger, much bigger number than having to wait till next year. I know that just because uh-huh. the re- the retail locations in our area are putting limits on the amount that I just heard from somebody yesterday that the they can only buy a very small amount right now. The, the stock does not exist. Somehow and looking at retail that, numbers doesn't feel that helpful to me. I mean, well, no, but that, that's... It's, th- it's a question of scaling for me. I, I'm not comfortable at this point saying like saying what my expectations are going to be for growing growing in this climate. I can say that I think it's reasonable to expect that we're going to be targeting in excess of a million dollars in sales. Next year. If we get licensed next year, depending depending when we get licensed next year. I can also say that the costs will be fairly significant. Um, Hopefully, operating in a town like this, we'll have a, a... quite a competitive advantage against um, other businesses, um, the cloth cost should be should be less. And st- yeah, startup costs are going to be more than ongoing costs. Right. So that's so arguing that, that, that in the first year we should more. be chart we should be asking for you to so, provide. So 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 we could less. have a different a different amount for the first year. We could yes. And you know that would be another way to structure it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as opposed to a, a set differential in percentages, have it be a differential according to the year of operation. When you're doing better, you know, we, we, we could, you know, if we wanted to ramp up, we could ramp up that way instead. I mean, it's kind so, of the same thing. I mean, mm, I hope... Well, not, not, if, not if we get to get a second, you know, not if we can have continuing community impact agreements. Because then, an operation that's that's well established will be paying at the maximum rate, and new entries would be allowed in. I just think, generally if, if speaking, new entries are going to be less in general, and then hopefully you you increase your sales, but you can't. Well, and that's that's John's argument about keeping it at three percent. Three percent of a hundred thousand is three thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You know, which is not excessive for somebody going into you know, trying to build a larger operation that you, that, you would I, expect to be capitalized to be able to get to that larger. I think amount. the I think the yeah. argument I'm trying to make though is we're hoping not to create a blueprint for high capitalization businesses. And well, so I, I get that. The, the flip side of that is we don't we don't want people coming to us with two dollars in their pocket saying we're gonna we're going to open up a cultivation. But we don't want that either. Right. We want people who are who have substantial backing so that they can be successful. Okay. We don't want to waste our time with a line at the door of, of a dozen people saying, hey, this is great. You know, we'll come into Conway and, you know, for, for two bucks we'll, we'll get into business. We don't want that either. We want, you know, people who are have substantial backing if they're going to do it, you know. So why don't, why don't we get, see if you can find out some more numbers on, mm-hmm. on impact statements and graduated situations. Because I say the only thing I've heard is 3%. Uh, I've talked to four or five people. Okay. And that's, yeah, that's I what can, they're I'll, doing. I'll send okay. you the, the other, okay. some of the other host agreements. That's fine. Um, All right. And we'll, we'll talk about that further. Okay. But everything else, but, everything else in the agreement, um, is is uh, our our town council has gone over it and it's uh, and and Bill had a couple of suggestions that we we just spoke about and everything else seems to be okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, good. So let's let's figure it's, out. It's time that for real guys. Impact. Okay, I'm going to answer the question. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank next you. week. Thanks. Continue Bill. next week or yeah. The week. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Great. Just yeah. Sure. That means you got homework to do before then. <laughs> I was a grad student. All right. To do All right. <laughs> and make sure you send everything to Lisa. I, I'm actually out for the next three days. So. Yeah. Okay, next item on our agenda planning board appointment of Dave Barton as an associate. Oh, here's a hard one. I, I thought you might all be sufficiently familiar <laughs> yeah, with We, we know, know, know Dave. Yeah. And so this came out of your pocket. He, comes, oh, right. he comes at the recommendation of uh, uh, the planning board. So I will make a motion that we uh, Second. appoint uh, uh, Dave Barton to 
the planning board as an associate member for term ending 5-17-19. That That's the, the, the town date election. of election. Okay. Uh, he better second. run for election. Do, do yeah, I just lock him in by appointing him longer? Do I, do I have a second? Yes, well, you, have a se you have a second. I do. Okay. And, this is, and this is associate member. All those in favor? So. Aye. Aye. Okay. And, and a after this, the, the planning board, uh, I either I, I'm not sure whether he gets elected. Uh, I think the planning board can appoint him after and, this. As an associate yeah. member. Yeah. As an associate member. Yeah. But then he can be elected. If he's right. if he's running for election as a full member, so I'm not I'm not sure. I think they may just be building a bench right now. Okay, Good. that's Good. fine. But I, I I can see associate member if if it wasn't to the end of the fiscal year, right? Right. I can see him running. For yeah. That spot. They want if, him on until if, then. If if necessary, he's okay. he's available to do that. Okay. So while we're talking about boards, I just realized I did have another meeting that I went to this week. <laughs> so, we, so we might as well include them all, right? I mean, you know, of course. we want them in the notes. So the Conservation Commission did have a site visit this week that we all went to. How could you possibly forget how, that? How could I forget that? So it was on Sunday morning in the rain, um, and we went to a site visit in the Northampton, in the woods owned by Northampton, just this side of the Whateley Reservoir out near where Roaring Brook Road turns off of Waitley Road and they're replacing a culvert and it was, it was interesting to walk a couple hundred yards off into the woods through the snow and see the site of a, of a culvert replacement. On so, Sunday morning on in the freezing on, on rain? On Sunday morning, yes. Okay. okay. So, so anyway, just I, I don't know whether I should be reporting as my selectman's duties things that we do like, like you know, but whatever you think is important, uh, I, I think there be reported. Yeah, it, it, you can't it, get credit it, unless it's on. The it's not a question of credit. It's just that, I you know. Joke, I'm joking. Uh, I, 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 it, 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 so th these are interesting projects yeah. that mm. that by being on these boards that we get mm -hmm. to do. So yes. did it did it have something to do with the the city of Northampton doing the culvert replacement then? So the city or, of Northampton owns the woods all around that reservoir, which they own and provides water to Northampton, and they need to replace a culvert because... Were they replacing the culvert? They will be replacing the culvert oh, they, in, they, in... They will be replacing... In this coming not, summer when the snow melts and when the stream okay, is so, much reduced from how hard it's flowing right now. So Conway is not replacing that culvert. Conway will not be replacing it, but Conway's okay. Conservation Commission right. has to approve okay. um, all of the remediation work they're going to do to make sure they don't muddy the stream, because yeah. this is a stream that becomes a body of public water. Mm. So uh, these are the kind of important work that the Conservation Commission right. does. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. All right, next item on the agenda is the letter supporting uh, SD 2292 drafted by Senator Hines regarding revisions of school funding for rural schools. Um, we're all familiar with this. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, sign this letter in support uh, to be sent to um, Senator Hines, as well as uh, copies to uh, Senate President Spilka, House Speaker DeLeo, Representative Mark, Senator Jason Lewis, the Chair Joint. Uh, Committee on Education and Representative Al Alice Peisch, uh, Chair of the uh, Joint Committee on Education. Do I have a second? So is the reason it's going to Paul Mark instead of Natalie Blay? Uh, um, uh, because she, I screwed up. She's our actually our rep, um, <coughs> although... Right. Sorry. Paul Mark and Adam uh, Hines are both on committees that have to do with education. Yeah. Natalie well, Blaze chose not to ask to be on a committee involving education. And and right, but she, she's our she, rep though. Yeah. yeah. So, and she's new. But uh, yeah, that's the one you can you need help on. You, you, know, you can add, add her add name her to it. Add her name to it. Leave Mark's uh, name on. Sure. Her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know of a House bill that's the corresponding bill to the Senate bill, um, and one will be created automatically eventually. Um, yeah. and it's a band-aid where 
when you know massive amounts of transplants, transfusions, and tourniquets are required. <laughs> but uh, but you know band aids stop some bleeding, I suppose. Thank you. Every little bit helps. Yep. Yep. Okay, we're good. Great. Uh, we had a second. Do we have a second on that? Second. And, and an aye. Everybody uh, yes. in favor? Okay. Tom, we have any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? I do not. Okay. Tom, you have an update for us. I do. I would have put the recorder, Greenfield recorder, on this list as well. It's always good. Mm -hmm. They print everything. Yeah. They print it. I'll, yeah. I'll look. Yeah, he'll, we'll send it to them too. Uh, for committee news. So, typing my pen. Uh, that one. The Open Space Committee notes that volunteers have been mowing the walking path on the meadow and would like to include it in the town's mowing uh -huh. contract. The highway superintendent is acutely aware of the scrutiny of his budget and went to great lengths to keep it level funded. What? He's going out to bid, and I have asked him to include the mowing as an ad alternate so we can see what it would cost. The Open Space Committee is, is open to having their budget have whatever it takes to mow it, but we don't know what that is. We're still in the process. We're still getting ready to bid the thing. So what? that may be an addition that comes in. It's not going to be more than a couple thousand dollars, something like that. What's the meadow that they're talking about? The River Bend Meadow up here. The, the, the used to be referred to as the, the, the Rose property. property. The Jack Lockhead's been mowing. Yes. yes. Volunteer. Volunteer. Yes. Right. 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 He doesn't want to do that anymore. The path. It's mm -hmm. a path. Well, it, it, he he did it in the beginning, but now it should be taken over by the town. So uh, that's that, an update on that. Okay. Uh, we are advertising on the town website for new housing committee members who are appointed by the moderator. We need a committee partly because the Community Preservation Committee may have some work to do soon, and one member of that committee comes from the housing committee. Lisa and I are also working on shoring up the rest of the membership. Uh, in looking at the written piece from the Capital Improvements Planning Committee, so, so which how do we go you asked me to do them? last time, well, if you can hold okay. your okay. comments to the, uh, okay. and, and I can answer a lot of this offline okay. too. Okay. This is just an update. Um, uh, you asked me to look at the uh, written piece from the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. My preference would be to have a brief mission statement focused on capital planning with a piece offered by the committee serving as a communication by the present committee to the town. Uh, so I'll, I'll have something on that later. Uh, the triennial audit of the Conway Grammar School is due again this year. Uh, I've asked the Finance Committee for a Reserve Fund transfer of $2,500 to cover this. After the warrant article slated for this year's annual town meeting, we should not have to worry about funding this uh, in the future, not funding it, but funding it uh, every three years. There, there will be a pool of money out of which this can be paid, and we won't have to uh, think of it three years in advance. Uh, I've also asked the Finance Committee for the remaining funds necessary to bring the Mark Voice Germain Trust Fund up to its mandatory amount of principal, $25,000. This had been set up as part of the regular mowing contract payment for cemeteries, but interest did not keep up with expenses and the account was inadvertently overdrawn. I am convening a multi-hazard mitigation plan update committee. Kimberly McPhee of the FERCOG will guide the committee through the process. Now, we did this last, I think, five years ago, and this keeps us mm -hmm. eligible for FEMA hazard mitigation grants. Right. Mm -hmm. The Energy Committee is looking at possible items for a competitive grant application. Uh, through green communities. I'll keep you up to date as the deadline approaches. Uh, in departmental news, Nexamp has hired an environmental company to respond to DEP's concerns about the main Poland Road solar project. Uh, they will be reporting to the Conservation Commission at their next meeting. I have a copy of DEP's concerns and their responses if anyone would like to see it. I, I would. Okay, I've got that right over there. Great. Uh, I have put two poll hearings on next week's agenda at 7 p.m. These are usually pro forma, taking just a few minutes. One is on Maple Street with 
heavier wire replacing lighter wire, and three poles proposed to shorten the span between existing poles. The other is a new pole and step-down transformer for old Cricket Hill Road to match voltage for a customer. Okay. Questions for Thomas? No. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Uh, select board comments. Do we have any comments from the selectmen? Just a reminder of the budget hearings tomorrow at, I'm sorry, Thursday at uh, the Conway Grammar School. 515 is the Frontier budget, and 6 o'clock is the Conway Grammar School budget. It's the first unveiling. So, okay. no votes. Thank you. Um, and, uh, tomorrow is also the Garage Committee, I believe, at 6 p.m. Yes. So I'm slated to attend. Okay. All right, mail. We have uh, two pieces of mail from um, Frontier Regional and Union 38 School Districts. One that says, um, we are invited to a public hearing and meeting of the Frontier Regional School Committee to discuss the proposed fiscal 2020 budget at the Frontier Regional School on March 5 at 6 p.m. Okay. And the second one is uh, we are invited to a public hearing and meeting of the Conway School Committee, uh, Conway Grammar School Committee, to discuss the proposed fiscal 2020 budget at the Conway Grammar School on March 21st at 6 p.m. So... So those are scheduled to be the votes. So, so, so those would be the votes if, so to, to get a first crack at it, right? And tomorrow, or to come Thursday, and right? Get, get a look at it. Right. <coughs> we also have an announcement that uh, library hours are Monday one to six, Wednesday two to seven, and uh, Saturday ten to twelve. Those are new new hours. The new hours for the library. Night hours and no night hours anymore. Well, you have one to six, evening, two to seven, and uh, Saturday is the. Uh, I like that look when they're all lit up at eight at night with the lamps lit. On well, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. But, well, no more. Okay. Okay. If there's no more uh, business to come before the board, uh, our next meeting is March fourth, uh, over at town hall at 6 p.m. Uh, and a joint meeting scheduled with the Finance Committee at 6.30 p.m. Um, one sec, but can, remember we talked last time about rewording that so that we can begin the joint meeting a little bit early instead of searching for jokes to tell for 10 or 15 minutes like we were doing a couple, do Well, it, it all depends on what the agenda is. I, th I think we'll have then. enough to get us to 6.30. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye.